<laughs> Did you just call it a gurney bubble? <laughs> gurney bubble. <laughs> I feel like Clarkson. It's a shitty That's 40. Good. That's our new name for it, guys. No. Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna need helmet room because of my stupid blonde bond. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Look at beautiful stars. I wanna drive a faster car. Hi guys and welcome to this episode on Make or Break. Today we're checking out the inside of the Southern GT40 and um, this could be one of the only GT40s I might be able to get in because of my stupid blonde bonds. Yeah, this one's got a gurney bubble, so you should be alright. <laughs> a gurney bubble? Did you just call it a gurney bubble? Gurney bubble. <laughs> right, I'll give you that. So I am booting it up in 20 degree heat. Nice. And I'm being, I think I'm being optimistic by calling it 20 degree heat. But yeah, it feels like 20 degree heat because we've had it so cold for the last few weeks. There's the alarm. We're going to pass you the, uh, the key. Security. And then. Oh. Ever a dignified car to get in and out of as a GT? No! <laughs> oh. Oh. Majestic. Wow. See, I'm six foot and I've got some. I'll get my legs all the way down. The difference of having the pedals hung from the top. That is lovely. And this pipe in the middle, right in the center, is the coolant hoses. So I can imagine that gets a little bit warm. The gear lever is very cool. So basically, this little uh, contraption just here will allow you not to go into reverse. But when that's out of the way, you can go all the way over into reverse, which is kind of cool. So you don't want to get stuck driving. But first on this car is over here and back. So it's called a dogleg gearbox. It's in a different place. And we're looking straight away at the gauges. So these are Smith's gauges. Very, very cool. Got the horn. That works, which is nice. Um, but there isn't a lot in here that is very different to what we've already got. You know, we've got a leather stitch dash, which is very pretty. We might be able to do that. I've got some ideas with some carbon fiber about laying some carbon fiber in here to give us a bit of a, a satin feel. I'm loving the leather or the vinyl, whatever this is. Um, I'm loving the roof mounted mirror. I've seen a few of them mounted to the dash, seen a few mounted to the roof. Pretty sure the roof is the right place. Our one has an air conditioning unit under here, but the seat is actually very, very comfortable, Josh. Like, really comfortable. The clutch is nice and long, nice and low. Like, and the steering wheel, if I can have the, if I can have the key, Sir Joshua, that'd be lovely. The steering wheel, okay, is, a, the right arm's length, and albeit it is pretty central to where I am. But you've got to imagine, and I go over this more than I probably need to, if I'm going to be three inches more this way, I'm going to be like this. So I really would like to be centre. I think that is a lovely feel. I mean, the gauge, in my opinion, isn't centre to the steering wheel, but these are very small, small parts. But just wow. Like, I mean, will it start? Should start. Am I allowed? Just going to uh, move a few bits and bobs. No worries. So basically, guys, what I'm doing, any car you're going to start that's not yours, you want to make sure your foot is hard down on that clutch. And obviously turn the gear lever side to side to make sure it's not in gear, which it feels like it's in neutral, which is good. Um, right, how does this work? We're going to go ignition to the left and then it should it should all be on the key if you give it a couple of blips on the throttle and make sure it's in neutral Shit. wow that sounds pretty amazing I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting the pickup to be so violent and so fast. It's got, it's got such a unique way of revving, this it's car. Woof. It's instant. It's, it's almost Formula one -esque. It's unbelievable. But imagine, Josh, in only April, May, June, July, August, September, five months, we're going to go racing in that. 
<laughs> in the shitty 40. That's our plan. <laughs> I like that, shitty 40. The shitty That's 40. Good. That's our new name for it, guys. So number one, we've, we've sat in it. I'm going to shut the door, because this one's got what they call a gurney bubble in the door, which is in here. And that should give me... Hello! Have you got headroom, sir? So I'm kind of like, I don't know if I need one. Have you got helmet room? No. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to need helmet room. But that is done so nicely in there. And gives me a little bit of headroom. And a very... F I feel like Clarkson. <laughs> there we go. But, guys... The greatest gurney bubble in the world. So, moving on, on this part of the video, we're going to take you over to the V8 engine that Josh has been stripping down. Let's get to it. So, Sam, I've got some really bad news. Oh, do we need to buy a new car? No, it's just buying a new car. All seems all right, to be fair. Very new looking in here. Very, very, uh, it's very, very clean. It's, I've not found any scary disasters. I had the oil out and I fished all through the oil, made sure there's no filings in it. It was all nice and clean. Um, the oil was a little bit dark, but we don't know how long it's been since it was last changed. Yep. I don't think it's been run much since it's had its rebuild. Yep. Um, this bit of paper, I can just pull it up out of the way. I've only had that on there just to stop too much dust and dirt and debris. But you can see, if you look at a cylinder which is down, you can very, very faintly see some sort of left and right score marks. Um, that's where it's been honed in the past. So these pistons at some point have been out yep. um, and the bores have been honed. So I would say at some point in its not too recent running past, it's had a rebuild. Yeah. Um, the actual paint of the engine, I think, is is all fairly well intact. So that should be something we, you know, we were considering we the idea. We a little bit and give it a new paint. I think, I think we, you know, we were going to go down the route of maybe getting the engine painted and all shot blasted and painted. But to be fair, it's all, all the way around it, it's blue. So a freshen up of the engine block be fine. Um, I've had the sump off. I've had a main cap off. Yep. Um, the main cap all looked okay. We are going to speak to the man with no name and see if he thinks we need to put new pistons and rods in it, which is up, up to him, really. He is the expert, so... Yeah, I mean, I'm no expert, but I do know that you can buy better pistons than what you've got there. Yep. Because these have a dish in the middle. Yep. And you can buy pistons that are flat-topped just with the clouds for the valves to, yep. to, to get your clearance. Um, so... You know, those dishes, although they are only small, they're probably, what, an eighth, not even an eighth of an inch yep. of that dish. Um, but any kind of dish in the piston is going to lower your compression ratio. Yeah. Um, the higher your compression ratio, uh, we're not, the we're more not so, We're not bolting a turbo or a supercharger on this, so we are... We're not we going mental. Um, so you could put new, you could put higher performance pistons in it and stronger pistons and stronger rods, but it all just depends on what avenue we're planning on going down with the car. If we want it to stay, make mega serious Boss 302 power, yeah, um, yeah you're gonna want, we're going we're gonna to want higher yeah. compression pistons and stronger rods, so on and so forth. Um, but if we're, if we're happy with somewhere between... three and 400 horsepower, I think we're I, be I'm, Yeah, I'm thinking somewhere between 260 and 360 yeah. would be ample. This car's probably going to weigh a tonne just over by the time we're done. Yeah. So our horsepower per tonne is... It's going to be pretty clever. It's going to be 260 to 360 horsepower per ton, um, which for a car, for for an average sort of run of the mill car is is pretty good. Mega high, so it's going to shift, but it's not going to be so angry and so aggressive that you're not going to want to drive this car no. on the road. You know, we're we're trying to go down the route of basically a resto mod GT car. Yeah. So slightly bigger wheels, slightly more efficient brakes, um, and enough power to put your foot down on the motorway and frighten a few people in Porsche boxes. I like that. <laughs> Talk to me about what we've got down here. So you've removed quite a lot of parts, which, which we can now see. And guys, please don't be under any illusion. Just because this looks new, that is a piece of steel that has been encased in oil. So, you know, that may look new, but we do have all brand new... It's, um, it's definitely been used, because you can see some blue in on the end yeah. of the teeth where it's got warm. So we do have a new one of them. We do, know ha we do have... This is a um, timing chain cover okay which all the water pump actually bolts onto here which is there nice big steel water pump um these are our engine mounts which we can get powder coated and put back on and reuse but realistically it all looks in pretty good condition you know it looks like we've had a little bit of a leak here yeah um which is you know un understandable but would have been a horrible job to replace in in situ in situ <laughs> i right? don't i almost think it would have been to the point where it was impossible to replace in situ because <laughs> there are certain parts certain water hoses that you just can't get to no it's impossible um, but yeah, there was a slight water leak. 
Uh, to be honest, you probably wouldn't have even known. It was only a tiny, tiny week. You wouldn't have even known it until we got underneath and started unboxing no. things. Um, but we've got a brand new water pump going on. It is slightly shallower than the one you've bought. Yep. Um, so we're going to gain something there. Uh, I've had the sump off, like you say. The sump is only held on with a couple of bolts because I know you want to get that to taken off. powder coated shortly, yeah. Yep. Um, to be honest, cosmetic wise, there's not massive amounts that you're going to see of this engine. No. Because you think your bulkhead's going to be. We'll paint it blue. We'll make it look nice and pretty. Um, get some um, VHT paint, very high temperature paint. Yep. Yeah, so to be honest, we don't need to do too much to more to it for the time being. When we get the cylinder heads back from the machine shop, um, we'll get to taking out, taking off the, to the timing chain gear, yep. and then we can pull our camshaft out. Um, I need to consult with a few people on what we're going to do about cam followers, um, yep. because I'm only 30 years old. I've never built a 302. No, I've seen either. people building 302s, and, and I, you know, I, yeah. I, I know they're not a particularly complicated engine, but I do need to ask a few questions about lifters, because yeah. we've got hydraulic lifters in there at the moment, and they'll, they'll need to be reset yeah. when we put them back in. Or, ideally, cool. we would go around the route of solid lifters yeah. and adjustable push rods, so on and so forth. I think um, that would be a nicer idea, because then it's all reliable, you can set it, and you know what it's going to be. We've got a new oil pump to go in. The oil pump that was in there, uh, all looks lovely and clean and, and great, but seeing as, we're here, seeing as we've got the sump off and everything else apart, it would make sense to put a brand new yep. oil pump in. Um, yeah, so we're sort of waiting now on the cylinder heads. Once we've got the cylinder heads back, we can Start get the engine, engine bolt all back together. I know it's a little bit premature worrying about getting the engine back together, but it's a part now, so in it ideal world. It would be world, nice to get it back together. Back so together, sealed up. Um, yeah, good, ready to go. Do Perfect. you want to have a little chat about your gearbox? Let's have a little chat about the gearbox. So I've had a little run through your gearbox. Yep. Um, Box of gears. Yeah. So there's a little tiny little bit of uh, feedback, a little bit of play here and there. So uh, take, sending it off to a gearbox specialist, I think is going to be a nice thing to do. Yep. Um, there's a little tiny bit of backlash just in the diff, but not a lot. There's a little bit of play in your input shaft. So your input shaft. Well, there is quite a lot of play in that actually. Yeah, but they're they're not designed to be moved up and down like this. Obviously, this spigot of the sits of on the, the input flywheel. shaft will be will be inserted in the back of the flywheel in the spigot bearing. So um, that bearing is kind of supported all the way along. Yeah. That shaft, sorry, is supported all the way along once that's in the spigot of the flywheel. Um, but seeing as we're going to be putting more power through this than than what it's ever going to have been used to, yeah. and possibly what it's designed to to put with uh, to cope with. Um, if we can find a fresh set of gears and get a fresh set of gears put in it, that'd be lovely. Um, well, other than that, tornado, it, all seemed, um, it all seemed good. There's a, there's a man at Tornado who contacted me and said, Sam, if you really want to go to town this gearbox, get hold of me because I've got all the stuff you need. Yep. And I am going to reach out to him. I think he's a, you know, he's a reputable guy. He's got a very good reputation for what he does. I think it'd be good to reach out to him. Yep. So I'll get that done. Um, and then, um, yeah, so basically it's going to be a matter now of getting the gearbox sent off to someone to look at. We're going to send, um, hopefully got our heads and our bits and pieces back and our intake back. Yep. We can look at what the work's been done on them. We can start putting the engine back together. Then we can start looking at the rear chassis. Yep. We want to get the rear chassis done to a point where we're happy. Um, and I'm going to make it look a lot prettier. I have done a lot of aluminium cladding when I built the NAS Charger. I built all the inner wheel arches and stuff like that. I have got a bead roller and I have got a pipe bender and I've got an English wheel. Lovely. So we may be able to play around. I don't think I'm going to need an English wheel on this. No, but we can have a play. We can have a little play. But um, it'd, be nice to, it'd be nice to get some bead roll aluminium, especially on the inlay of the steps. On yep. the Southern GT car, on the inlay of the steps, they've got some nice oh, bead roll aluminium. Isn't it? And it just you wouldn't need to have worry about having a piece of carpet there if you've got no. nice bead roll aluminium. The, uh, the floors and things like that, there's not much point going to bead roll because no. we'll probably carpet that to sound better yeah. because it's going to be a road. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we need to get the gearbox sent off, get that run through, get everything checked and everything, yep. anything that needs doing, get done, get the engine bolted back together so that it's all, it's all sort of dust proofed and, and dirt yep. proofed again. And then we can bolt the gearbox back up to the engine so that we can lay it in, essentially mock mount the engine and the gearbox back into yep. the car so that we can get our measurements once we've cut the rear chassis yep. off. And then we can make our rear chassis to suit our gearbox and our drive shaft outputs. And then the, the, the sort of the real bones of the, of the project will be uh, well underway. That's it. So guys, thanks for watching another episode on Make or Break. Hopefully, you know, these videos aren't too tedious and boring, but soon we're gonna be getting our hands dirty and we're actually gonna be in the realms of cutting this bad boy up, rebuilding the engine, putting this thing back together, and actually getting somewhere, right? Yeah, let's just hope once we've cut everything off, we can uh, remember everything went and try and make a decent car out of it.
<laughs> Thanks again, guys. See you next week. See ya. Quick reminder, hit that subscribe button, the like button, and then the bell button. So you get alerts when we release new episodes and follow us on social media too for extra stuff and more alerts about videos we're releasing, which at the moment is every Sunday and the odd Wednesday too. Bye for now.